Hello everyone, welcome to the Ultimate Physics channel. The topic of today's video is Line Spectra, the Hydrogen Spectra. By 1800s, scientists were aware of the fact that chemical elements when burnt in flame or excited in a discharge tube produce spectrum that consists of discrete lines representing unique wavelengths. The line spectra is in contrast with the continuous band spectrum emitted by solids, liquids and gases when they are hot. So this spectrum corresponds to the thermal body spectrum whereas this corresponds to excited atoms. Thus it was understood that the line spectrum carries the unique signature of the elements that pre are present in it. Optical tools such as the prism have been in use for over two centuries, but the modern development of diffraction gratings by people such as Henry Rowland in 1880s was a significant step in the study of atomic spectra. In a typical line spectrum, the wavelength increases from right to left. The visible part of this line spectrum uh, is typically between 400 nanometers to 750 nanometers. And if you take hydrogen spectrum, for example, you would see four prominent visible lines in the spectrum and to the right of it falls the ultraviolet range and to the left of the red line here is the infrared region and you would see discrete lines representing unique wavelengths. On the other hand, thermal bodies emit continuous spectrum where you would see bands of a number of wavelengths, overlapping wavelengths across the spectrum. So you will have n number of wavelengths in each of these bands so that you can't really resolve them into individual wavelengths. So that is the main difference between line spectrum and a continuous spectrum. This is the typical setup used to study the line spectrum of elements. In this one you have a high voltage battery exciting a discharge tube containing low pressure gases and this is used to excite the atoms in the gas then you have a slit through which the light passes through to be made into a narrow beam and then that falls onto the diffraction grating the grating consists of a number of closely drawn lines uh, in order to be able to cause diffraction and then the diffracted beam is seen here uh, this one is the direct one undiffracted beam and these are the diffracted beams corresponding to the wavelengths present in the original source so in the original light whatever of the constituent wavelengths those wavelengths are seen here to be diffracted to different diffraction angles depending on the wavelength and this is governed by the equation d sin theta is equal to n lambda where n is the order of diffraction you would get different orders this corresponds to n is equal to 1 that is the first order all the wavelengths and then for the second order similarly all the wavelengths you would get for the third order you will get all the, all the wavelengths and so on and the intensities of these orders would be different n is equal to 1 corresponds to the first order and hence it would be the uh, uh, wavelengths with strong, uh, strongest intensities. Here theta is the angle of diffraction. In this equation, d is called as the grating constant, which is typically the sum of the thickness of the line plus the distance between two lines. There are a number of lines drawn closely, so it is the sum of the thickness of a line and the distance between the next line. Theta is the angle of diffraction, n is the order of diffraction and lambda is the <coughs> wavelength. So for each wavelength there will be a different angle of diffraction. Further improvements in the field of optics and possibility of production of better gratings with uniformly drawn fine lines led to obtaining better spectrum of atoms. By 1860s, Bunsen and Kirchhoff realized that wavelengths obtained in the spectrum is characteristic of the elements studied. Hence, it was possible to identify the composition of materials using spectroscopy. Hydrogen was the first element whose spectra was most studied simply because its spectra was simple looking as well as due to the fact that chemists believed that 
the larger atoms, complex atoms were made up of hydrogen atoms. Particular attention was paid to studying the solar spectrum to understand sun's composition that eventually led to the discovery of helium atom. That is a topic for a separate video later. One of the important research problems pursued around that time was establishing an empirical relationship between uh, the various lines in the hydrogen spectrum. There were four prominent lines in the spectrum as I drew an earlier diagram. Remember that there were lines that were not visible also, but that story is for later. Johann Balmer was the first one to provide an empirical fit for the observed wavelengths of the hydrogen spectrum. His formula could be written as lambda is equal to 364.56 k square over k square minus 4. It is convenient to write the inverse of this equation as 1 over lambda is equal to 1 over 364. 0.56 k square minus 4 o k square 1 over lambda is equal to 1 over 364.56 1 minus 4 over k square and if I take this 4 out of the bracket I could write 1 over lambda is equal to 4 over 364.56 1 over 4 minus 1 over k square where k is an integer greater than 2 that means k could take values 3, 4, 5 and so on I continue there 1 over lambda is equal to 4 over 364.56 I could write 1 over 2 square minus 1 over k square and this could be written again as 1 over lambda is equal to rh 1 over n square minus 1 over k square and this is called as the Redberg's equation. For the hydrogen atom, the value for this Rh which is called as the Redberg's constant is equal to 1.0972 times 10 power 7 per meter and this is a general equation for calculating the different wavelengths of the hydrogen spectrum. This equation is called the Redberg's equation and Johannes Redberg along with Walter Reitz provided this most general form of the equation. For k values equal to 3, 4, 5 and 6, we get all the four visible lines of the hydrogen spectrum. These four lines corresponding to uh, the Bama series fall in the visible part of the hydrogen spectrum. In the next 20 years or so after the discovery of Bama series, four other series of hydrogen atom for different values of n were discovered. They are, for n is equal to 1, it is a Lenin series, k must be greater than 1, it falls in the ultraviolet region. For n is equal to 2, it is the Palmer series. K must be greater than 2, it falls in the visible and higher region. For n is equal to 3, it is the Pastian series. K must be greater than 3, it falls in the infrared region. For n is equal to 4, it is the bracket series. K must be greater than 4, it falls in the infrared region. For n is equal to 5, it is the fun series. K must be greater than 5, it falls in the infrared region. So these five series form the hydrogen spectrum. The understanding of the Redberg equation and the discrete spectrum of hydrogen were important research topics of the early 20th century. That brings this video to a conclusion. I shall catch up with you soon on another interesting video. Until then, bye bye.